one of the top teams in the NBA. Their team leader, Gary Payton, showed that his all-round game is one of the best in basketball, and his teammates sure do love him. Gary, that's why he's the best point guard in the league. He proved that tonight. He made things happen. He got a couple of key steals that were critical in the game, and that's what makes him so great. He does the other little things that probably won't even show up in the stat sheet. So, Seattle will become the last unbeaten team in the NBA, with our high flyer Gary Payton stealing the show for the Sonics. Utah were NBA finalists last year, but were nowhere near their best against Western Conference rival Seattle. In fact, Utah's score was the second lowest ever in NBA history. That's right. The usually reliable duo of Stockton and Malone couldn't inspire Utah, and that might be a costly loss later on in the season as they fight it out to find the best in the West. But Utah have gone to the last two NBA finals. And this year, without a strong Chicago, many experts say it could be third time lucky for Utah. Utah winning the finals? Hell no. They got more chances of hosting the Winter Olympics. Only joking. But another strong contender in the Western Conference is the Los Angeles Lakers. And they've been looking to strengthen their squad. As we find out in NBA Shorts. The big buzz around the NBA is about the baddest of NBA boys, Dennis Rodman. Oh my goodness, Rodman just kicked the photographer. He's been missing in action since the start of the season. The ex-boy toy of Madonna is known as the cross-dressing, hair-colour-changing freak, or rather, personality of the NBA. Since 1996, he's played for the Chicago Bulls, where his hustle and defence helps make Chicago three-time NBA champions. But this year, he's looking for a new club. Despite his talent, many teams have shied away from Rodman because of his often explosive and disruptive nature. But it looks like the LA Lakers are willing to take a chance. After a slow start, LA is in need of someone to help big Shaquille O'Neal in the middle. With the enigmatic Rodman, nothing is ever set in stone. So stay tuned, we'll keep you up to date. When you play physical basketball like Dennis Rodman, you get called for fouls and often these lead to free throws. They're worth one point, and they're free because there are no defenders in the way. It's kind of like a penalty kick, but NBA teams take about 20 of them a game. It should be the easiest shot in basketball, but don't tell the Seattle Supersonics' Vin Baker that. Baker, one of the top players in the league, can't hit them. He started this season missing his first 18. This free throw is an air ball. NBA teams have been hit by a rash of injuries, from knees to noses. Bloody nose for Jason. Players have been dropping like flies. Some of the biggest basketball stars can be seen wearing their finest studs rather than their NBA kits. It looks like this season may become more a war of attrition rather than a battle of basketball skills. After just two weeks of the new season, here are the front runners. In the Eastern Conference, the Atlantic Division leaders are Orlando and the Central Division leaders are Milwaukee, which is a bit of a shocker. And in the Western Conference, Utah lead the Midwest Division and Seattle are out in front in the Pacific. It's early days yet, but remember, eight teams from each conference will go into the playoffs. So, pressure was the theme this week. Kevin Keegan agreed to the impossible job and Stan Collymore had a day release from his stress clinic. But, as NBA philosopher Charles Barkley said, Now, nah, man, I don't feel pressure. Pressure's for tyres. We'll leave you with the plays of the week. See ya. homesick he can pop on the Eurostar. Well, actually, I think... Is there intelligent life out there? What about down there? The answer is yes. Businesses are working faster and more efficiently thanks to BT's digital lines. 
And now we're offering half-price conversion to BT Highway and ISDN. It's something extra for terrestrials. Call us now on 0800-800-845. Stand by for a TV coup on the world's greatest pop group. Don't you recognize them? That's right, it's ABBA. And for the first time since their heartbreaking split, all four members of the super band talk exclusively to ITV. From their very first performance of Waterloo in Swedish to their rise as the biggest selling super trooper group in the world. Join Agnita, Bjorn, Benny and Annie Fried as they tell their story, the ABBA story, tonight at 9 on ITV. It's playoff time stateside for both East and West. NBA 99. Welcome to NBA 99. Hello, Ben. <laughs> What's got speed? What's got strength? What's got excitement? What's got stop, drama? Stop, stop, stop. I know it doesn't need hyping. It's the NBA playoffs. Fasten your seatbelts and hang on. It's NBA playoff action. He's hot. Oh, He's killing it, man. He's killing it. Rice. Harrison with the move. That is courage. That is clutch. Can I get a witness? That is playoff basketball. Trust me, this stuff is going to be wild. Now, in this week's show, we bring you four of the most exciting teams in the first round of the NBA playoffs. Our game of the week from the East is Miami versus New York. Now, this is game three of their best of five series. And here come the Knicks, who are down by one, looking to take their second lead of the game, and Sprewell, who is wide open, gives it to them. From the West, it's Houston versus LA in game two of their first round matchup. Bryant Dickerson, the screen by O'Neal, and the pass to Shaq. Back in the corner! This week's high flyer is seven foot one, weighs 22 and a half stone, and wears a size 22 shoe. Do you know who it is? The Shaq. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He's going to ramble. We've also got the best of the rest with an extensive roundup of all the playoff action from the East and the West. But first, Miami versus New York. Now, this is the third year in a row that these teams have met in the playoffs. And when they play a game of basketball, it's more like a heavyweight boxing match. They hate each other. You don't believe me? Check this out. This one's going to get really ugly. An ugly melee underneath Miami's basket. This is just ridiculous. And there's a fight breaking out. A fight is broken out between Morning and Johnson. They're quickly separated. Someone's on the bottom of that pile. Jeff Van Gundy is on the bottom of the pile. Oh, my goodness. This has gotten downright ugly and frightening. It's going to be a war out there. A war. New York were amped in game one, and led by Latrell Sprewell, they blew out the heat. Hard away. And it knocked away. Here comes Sprewell. All the way. Have you seen New York play better all season? No. This, this has been a tremendous performance. There cannot be any lingering anything from this other than, you know, the emotion you may have felt during the course of the ass kicking. But in game two, Miami were ready for anything the Knicks could bring at them. Oh, Sprewell tried a two-handed slam. Oh, yes. A block inside by Morning. Alonzo Morning was unstoppable. He scored 28 points as the Heat evened the series at one game apiece. The series moved to New York's Madison Square Garden, where both teams were eager to get the early advantage in this crucial third game. Yes. Again, Pat Mouse with the Morning. 10 on the shot clock. Determined to go up with it and score. From the outset, Miami, in the red vest, struggled to hit the three-point shot while New York tried to get out and run like they did in game one. And here come the Knicks who are down by one looking to take their second lead of the game and Sprewell who is wide open gives it to them. Alonzo Mourning continued his devastation of the Knicks as he put Miami back in the lead. His coach Pat Riley liked what he saw until New York started to sneak up on the heat. And there is Camby Look getting up. the loose Look ball. Up. There He's it got is. Sprewell and the Knicks take the lead. The quickness that the Knicks haven't shown in several years. Morning was providing most of the attack for the Heat. The Knicks were fearful of the big man's power on the inside, so they gave him all the room he needed on the outside. 
He showed he's no one-dimensional player as he was taking jump shots and knocking them down. Here is morning. He's been affected from outside and remains so. With Miami up 37-33 to in the second quarter, the Knicks started to turn up the heat on their attack as they looked to take control of the game. Campy gets through on the pick and roll right down the middle and Sprewell found him. The Heat by two. The Knicks looking to tie it up. Five on the shot clock. Ewing ties it up for New York. Crowd shouting defense as Porter misses. That was the trademark of the crowd when the Knicks won their championship back in 71 and 73 when Red Holtzman was the coach. Sprewell gets three more and the crowd erupts. Miami went ice cold in the second quarter as they missed every shot they took for more than four and a half minutes. And to make matters worse, they were being out-hustled by the Knicks. Tipped away by Ewing and Mansford. Marley for three, got it off in time. And the loose ball picked up first by Weatherspoon, then by Brown, and finally by uh, Kyles. And a foul is called against P.J. Brown. Great hustle by the Knicks. With time running out in the second quarter, the Knicks star shooting guard, Alan Houston, had a chance to increase the lead. His basket gave them a 45-37 to half-time lead and sent the New York faithful into a frenzy. At the start of the second half, the Heat continued to look bad as they were playing sloppy basketball. This bad pass led to a three-pointer by Charlie Ward. He turns over their first possession. Ward open for the three and hits. Good way for the Knicks to start, and they're on a 15 to nothing run going back to the first half. There's Dan Marley behind the arc, and he fires. In and out it goes. Nashburn for three. And once again, the Miami Heat really coming up empty. 0 for 14 from downtown. There's a good feed. Weatherspoon oh, blocked it live. Kirk Thomas made the block, the former Miami Heat with an outstanding defensive play. Charlie Ward gets it out to Larry Johnson for three. Oh, they're on fire now. Marley gets it in to Weatherspoon, and Thomas gets another block. Thomas doing the job on Clarence Weatherspoon. And Hardaway, this is from the two-point range, and over the top it goes. So Hardaway, one for six tonight, shooting. And uh, that really has uh, handcuffed the Miami offense, which was never uh, tremendous to begin with. Meanwhile, the Knicks offense was looking tremendous. This Patrick Ewing jump shot put New York ahead 61 to 39. It is a 22 point lead now for the Knicks. This was a complete team effort as every one of the New York Knicks contributed. During this remarkable run, the Knicks outscored the Heat 32 to two. And in the fourth quarter, the Knicks just continue to pour it on as they push the lead out to 27 points. And this is turning out to be a nightmare for Pat Riley and the Miami Heat. And the nightmare just kept getting worse. Young guns like Marcus Camby were feasting on the crowd's energy and exciting the fans. Even Spike Lee was happy. Midway through the fourth quarter, frustration started to set in as the Heat's Tim Hardaway blew a fuse. He's been having a tough time on the court, but this didn't stop him from talking trash. They're still going at each yeah, other. Right. It's got to be frustrating for the Heat, and uh, none more than Tim Hardaway. I do not. Hardaway got two technical fouls. That's a red card, and he was gone from the game. He was so fired up at the referee that he had to be restrained by teammates. With the outcome already decided, Alonso watched the rest of the game from the bench, where he saw the Knicks continue to dismantle the Heat. The Knicks get the big victory and grab hold of the series lead. No dramatics tonight, just a thrashing by the New York Knicks over the Miami Heat, beating them to take a 2-1 to -one lead. They kicked our butt tonight. Bottom line, there's not too much more you can say about it. This is one of those things where we wanted it, we wanted it really bad, and it really showed. The effort was there from everyone, and uh, you know, it was just great. It was a lot of fun. That was a massive victory for New York. Even the fans must have been surprised at the size of that win. But, typical New York, when they play bad, they're really bad. And when they play well, they're on fire. That was classic New York basketball. The Heat were ahead 37 to 33, but it wasn't enough to stop the determined Knicks. They put on a huge team effort and went on an incredible 32 to 2 run. And as Latrell said, they wanted it more. And the loose ball picked up first by Weatherspoon. 
then by Brown, and finally by oh. Childs, and a foul is called against P.J. Brown. Great hustle by the Knicks. Remember, in the East, New York are seeded number eight, and Miami are seeded number one. So, if Miami lose to New York, they will only be the second number one seeded team in NBA history to lose to a number eight seeded team. I'm just not sure whether New York are going to be able to do it, though. They haven't been that consistent. When we were in America, they were playing terrible. Yeah, but they had Patrick Ewing playing. My feeling is they play better when Patrick is sitting on the bench. So, Patrick, sit down. There are six other teams left in the East. Let's check out their results in the Eastern Conference Playoff Roundup. In Orlando, the 76ers took it right to the Magic in the first game. Allen Iverson scored 30 points, but it was his ability to get his teammates involved that put Philly on top. Ow, the Larry Hughes! The Sixers take the first game in style, 104 to 90. In game two, Orlando's defense came up big. Iverson goes in and blocked by Bo Ablo again. And Hughes has it off wow. the rim. And here comes Hardaway with a breakaway. What a spectacular sequence at both ends of the floor. The Magic tied the series. But in game three, Iverson's 33 points gave the 76ers the win and a 2-1 lead in the series. Indiana were looking to get out to a fast start in their series with Milwaukee. Jalen Rose came off the bench to pace Indiana with 24 points. Rose on fire! Indiana took game one 110 to 88, but game two was not so easy. Late in the fourth quarter, Reggie Miller hit this three to put Indiana ahead by four. But with under 15 seconds to play, Milwaukee had a chance to tie the game. into overtime where Milwaukee held a slim one-point lead in the closing seconds. Now it was time for Indiana to try some last-second heroics. We're down to five. Jackson. Down to three. The one-hander. The two. Indiana takes a commanding two games to nothing lead. Game three saw Indiana beat Milwaukee again. The Pacers sweep the books 3-0 and progress to the second round. Atlanta's Dikembe Mutombo was a defensive menace in game one. His shot blocking led the Hawk charge. And Williams is blocked by Mutombo. And here comes Blaylock penetrating, finds Corbin on the drive. Yes. And the Hawks taking advantage of the block shot, get the easy layup. In game two, Mutombo dominated a game, but this time on the attack. He scored 28 points as the Hawks beat the Pistons by 20 for the second game in a row. In game three, the series shifted to Detroit, where the Pistons in white were fighting to stay alive. Remember, one more loss and it's the early bar. So they came out aggressively and gave Matumbo a taste of his own medicine. Here's Matumbo rejected, and the place is going crazy. Detroit get the big win. After the break, it's our Western Conference game with the LA Lakers against the Houston Rockets. Plus, all the playoff news from the West. Find out who's hot and who's not. And this week's NBA High Flyer is Big Shaq. So, please come back. My free Monica Grenfell Best Beach Body Diet. Only in this weekend's News of the World. It's what Sundays are all about.
caught her again the other day. We like to listen to each other's breathing, she said. She's never off the phone to him. Jumps a mile every time it rings. I suppose it's healthy. She just seems so young. We had a bit of a set to the other morning. We both had a cry and a cuddle. Then the phone rang. Apparently he's moving to America. I don't know whether I'm happy or sad. Barclay card, one card and many newses. Das ist meine Liebeserklärung an C25. Hear that? It's coming straight out of the C25. Weil es mich niemals im Stich lässt. And I gotta let you know. Il C25? It's my sound. A un nuovo sound. Ed è il mio. Small, light, smart. The new Siemens C25. Get it? Be inspired. Whatever you do in business, the money programmers at Lakeview can provide you with integrated accounting software and systems to help make it an even better business. From under £20,000 to over 100 terminals. Whatever you do, call Lakeview. Meet Shaquille O'Neal, the Los Angeles Lakers center, nicknamed Shaq Diesel or Shaq Daddy due to his massive physical presence. I want to be a power player. That's what I, and that's what I want to be known as. 7-1-3-15 of nothing but power. He built a reputation in his early career for tearing baskets clean off the backboard. Nobody uh, is, is uh, going to stop me from getting to the basket. It's against the law. Shaquille O'Neal came into the league in 1992 and played for the Orlando Magic then signed to the Lakers in 1996 for over $18 million a year. Guaranteed, so if something happened to me... Shaq has his own clothing line, Twism, has made four top-selling hip-hop albums, and has starred in several Hollywood movies. It was a chance for me to uh, showcase my other talents and have a good time. I don't give a damn, because I got something to fall back on. <laughs> no other team in the NBA has anyone close to Shaq Daddy as center. He is a mountain of a player whose basketball skills can lift his entire team. Shaq is a very spectacular individual. Man, when Shaq don't, I just look at him like... Did you see what you just did? <laughs> he's not a flashy player. He's a straight-to-the-basket terminator. I'm still the greatest center in the game, and that's period. P-E-R-I-O-D. Take him on, but do so at your own risk. Houston came into Shaq's house, where Scotty Pippen chatted with Jack Nicholson. Jack was letting him know that the Rockets were not going to stop the Lakers in game one. Stolen by Shaq, who brings the dribble out of the backcourt himself. Lob to Kobe! Despite Shaq's power inside, the Lakers were in a tight battle. With under 15 seconds to go, they were down by one and needed a big defensive play. Hip it up top. Falls down, ball loose. Fisher dies for it. Great play and calls for timeout. Kobe Bryant was fouled and had a chance to put the Lakers on top. For the lead. Houston, now down one, had the final shot, but there was only five seconds remaining. They got a hurry, four seconds. Holdley on the move to the basket. Lost it. There's the horn. Ball game. The Lakers came up big in game one. In game two, Jack and his Hollywood buddies were back at the forum to see if the Lakers in yellow could repeat their winning performance. Houston needed their stars, Barkley and Pippin, to step up. But early on, it was Shaq Daddy who got L.A. rolling. O'Neal is there and slams it in. Bryant and Dickerson, the screen by O'Neal and the pass to Shaq. Pass into Kobe! Back out to Kobe, working on Mobley. And Kobe slashes across the lane. What a play. Things were definitely not going right for the Rockets. As they fought for this rebound, they mistakenly knocked it into the wrong basket. There's nothing you can do about that, coach. And there was nothing Houston could do about Shaq, 
who not only showed his toughness underneath the basket, but also gave us a gymnastics demonstration. And that's obvious. His mama used to take him to Jimboree. Look at that. Wow, poor floor. Since the Houston defense was concentrating so much on Shaq, point guard Derek Fisher was given a lot of room to roam on the outside. Fisher is a oh. flamethrower. He is splashing shots from all over the floor. The Lakers were putting together a complete game as their team defense held the Rockets to only 12 first quarter points. Mobley snaps at Rice, then tripped, and Pippen gets it back. Shot clock at two. Outside, it's Dickerson, but it goes, and it won't fly. Picked up by Ori for the Lakers. The Lakers right now, defensively, are doing everything they want to do. They're making Charles Barkley beat them. They're not getting other guys involved, and they're getting every shot they want. In Fisher. Fisher is red hot. And, and you know, when you watch this game right now, it would, you would think that it was the Rockets who won game one if you go by energy, because it's the Lakers right now who, is, who are playing with far more energy than the Rockets are. And the Rockets have to be desperate right now. The Rockets were desperate. Down by 19, they started to rely on the long ball to get them back into the game. Reserve guard Sam Mack gave Houston a spark as they cut the lead to nine. And Mack puts down another three. L.A. coach Kurt Rambis was getting a little nervous, so he cooked up a play for his sharp shooter, Glenn Rice. Rice with the three. Wow. wow. Then the young Kobe Bryant got into the mix. Bryant swirls oh. and tries and captures oh. on this. He just wanted it more. There's Pippen. And they got Harrington. Oh. Pass inside, ill-advised, picked up by Bryant. Lakers have numbers, and he flips it outside to Rice. While Rice cooked up a storm on the outside, the Terminator was just destroying the Rockets on the inside. The Lakers went into the half with a 15-point lead, and in the second half, they picked up where they had left off. It was the Shaq Show, co-starring his Laker mates. They double him on the block, outside to Rice, swinging it to Bryant for three. Not only were the Lakers good, but they were lucky. Here comes Bryant, lost it as he was going to kind of look at Fisher, who retrieves it. L.A. were playing one of their most impressive games of the season. Their defense was in the same flow as their attack. They swarmed to the ball, which frustrated Sir Charles Barkley and the rest of the Rockets. Mobley off to Pippen, who finds Elijah Wan with the shake. Oh, and a reception wow. by oh, Shaquille oh, O'Neal, picked up by Fisher. The Lakers the other way, and a three by Rice. Up 21, the Lakers kept the pressure on. Into a team with a three. Oh, what a drop. Robert Horry with the block. Elijah Wan outside. Barkley, another three try. Yeah, this time, enough. just everything. Enough. He's got to be getting time. Charles might have been tired, but the Lakers sure weren't. Shaq Diesel just kept on pumping in the points. Shaq. Oh, my. Oh, O'Neal from the floor, 11 of 19. O'Neal going up against Hakeem. Shaq. Bumping and grinding. Everything is dropping for Shaquille O'Neal tonight. But nothing was dropping for the Rockets' Scotty Pippen. He was having a nightmare of a game. Back out to Scotty, who has never hit a shot tonight from the field and continues. He is 0 of 7 from the field. Shaq just dominated the game, pouring in 28 points. O'Neal is on a roll. He is on a major roll. Riding a wave and riding it hard. He was on such a roll that even this notoriously miserable foul shooter was making them with ease. He put the nail in the Rockets' coffin as they can only hope for answers when the series goes to Houston. Jack Nicholson with the word of encouragement when they get back to Houston. You think that's word of encouragement? Or I think he's saying, you know, Charles, we're kicking your butt right now. <laughs> the Lakers get the huge win and are looking strong. Lakers go up in this series two games to none. They trounce the Rockets 110 to 98. This was a disappointing loss because we never really had a chance. They jumped on us so quick, and then we kind of panicked a little bit, and then it just had a snowball effect. Now we just have to go down there and just, you know, keep it simple and, you know, keep playing team ball because they got a lot of legends over there. They're just not going to hand it to us. And Shaq was right. Game three saw Scotty Pippen pumping 37 points as Houston pulled one back. LA lead the series two games to one. Do you know what? I really what? think my Laker boys can go all the way. No, 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 no. Look, let's just check out what else is going on in the West.
the number one seed San Antonio Spurs played like top dogs against Minnesota in game one. Tim Duncan led the way with 26 points. Inside to Duncan on the low block. Turns, hits. The Spurs took the opener easily, winning 99 to 86. In game two, it was the T-Wolves' big gun, Kevin Garnett, who took over on both ends of the court. Kelly, two on two, to the glass, with the left hand. Garnett is at the top to erase the shot, but Elliott with the recovery. Garnett steps up and rejects Duncan again. Minnesota tied the series. Game three saw the Spurs hit right back, giving the top seed in the West a 2-1 series lead. In game one, Portland's tough defense helped the club get out on the fast break as they blazed the trail on the attack. Three on two, the Blazers. Ryder puts it up and in. Isaiah Ryder led the team in scoring with 25 points as Portland downed the Suns 95 to 85. In game two, the Blazers continued to blaze, but this time they were led by the explosive connection of Damon Stoudemire to Brian Grant. Now what a good pass break. Oh, baby! The scene switched to Phoenix for game three, where the Trail Blazers looked to complete the sweep. But the Suns, in white, were not ready to go away quietly. Late in the fourth, the game remained close, but Portland just had too much firepower for Phoenix. That is a dagger right in the heart! The Blazers get the win and are moving on to the second round. Experience prevailed over youth in game one. Utah were flying as the Kings defense looked like Swiss cheese, full of holes. The mailman Carl Malone delivered 21 points as the Jazz won 117 to 87. But in game two, Sacramento were blocking up those holes as the Kings were not going to back down. Butler, back it in on Carl Malone. Hit a point, the jump hook up, good again. Utah was shocked as Sacramento's Chris Webber contributed 21 points to tie the series. For game three, the series shifted to Sacramento. In the Kings' 14-year history, they have never won a playoff game at home, but the Kings in white were looking good. The game went into overtime, where Vladi Divac had a chance to give Sacramento the lead. This one's shot. Oh, that's a huge one, Bob. Down three, Utah had one last chance to tie the game. Sacramento wins their first home playoff game since the franchise moved here in 1985. What's this? A football? Yep, that's because next week we're not going to be here. ITV has got a fantastic coverage of the FA Cup final. But don't despair. Playoff action continues on ITV2 on Monday and Thursday. So we'll see you in two weeks. I wonder if I can get this ball in. On me head, son. Oh, no, I can't. Patrick. Oh, well. <laughs> Worth a try. Show me how it's done, Beverly. smiling surface of the beauty world lies a darker truth drama in the afternoon movie the beauty jungle moments away yep. known to be the victim of his tantrums are getting into the fighting spirit Someone better give that guy a high five. Someone better pet get Kersey on the back. Confirmation in the Western Conference that the LA Clippers are bottom of the Pacific Division, but Portland and Seattle are on course for the playoffs. 
the Midwest, as we saw earlier, Minnesota are mounting an early challenge, but Utah are so difficult to beat. And as for Houston, still haven't found their rhythm yet. There was an early outbreak of March Madness this week after Indiana's Mark Jackson won our Game of the Week with half a second left to play and decided to enjoy his trademark shake and back dance. Jackson doing the Jackson shake. No harm there. Or was there? His coach Larry Bird said he's back doing his shake. I don't like that. We've talked about it and I don't like it. Now, who does that remind you of? Do I not like that? But you like this, here's our Plays of the Week. See ya. See ya. Everything working for Milwaukee. Wow, look at this. Behind the back, Robinson. Oh. Got it to drop. Drives on Duncan, first play up for the 